All right, today we are going to start uh, language varieties and uh, uh, it will be having uh, many subtopics. So we'll be dealing with uh, those subtopics uh, uh, you can say uh, stepwise so that in a sequence you can properly understand that what uh, this whole topic is all about. Now, uh, first of all, we are going to discuss standard language. Now, the standard language is an idealized variety and exists for most people as the version that is accepted as the official language for their community or country. Now, uh, standard language, that is an idealized variety. Like practically, it is uh, not there. Rather, uh, uh, like it, it is there in books and dictionaries and uh, language teaching material. It is there for official use, right? So practically no part or no group uh, in a community is using standard language. It, it is actually an idealized variety because it has no specific region. It is the variety associated with administrative, commercial and educational centers regardless of region, right? So um, this variety is not, um, you can say language of any particular region, rather uh, all of those people who are speaking different varieties of that language would be considering it as a standard language or an idealized language and they would be following it. Now it is variety uh, we teach to those who want to learn English as foreign language or second language. Like it's not only about English, every language has its own uh, standard language. But if we are talking about English, so whenever we are learning English or we are teaching English, so uh, the standard language that would be taught to, to the foreigners or to the second language learners, right? Similarly, if we are talking about any other language, so whenever someone wants to learn that language, uh, the standard language would be uh, taught to them, right? As I said earlier that this is uh, the language of uh, books. It is language of teaching material. So that teaching material would be used uh, uh, for uh, those who are in, interested in learning that particular language. Now it is found on TV and newspapers, books and schools, right? So wherever uh, you can say the, the language that is used for uh, public or mass media, uh, so uh, or as I said for teaching, so this particular variety of language that would be used. Now if we talk about uh, standard English, um, nowadays we have multiple uh, you can say English is rather not English only. So we have standard American English, standard British English, standard Australian English, standard Canadian English, etc. Now, when we say standard American English or standard British English or standard Australian English or standard Canadian English, now this means that there are multiple varieties of uh, English in that country. Now, standard American English means that in America there are multiple varieties of English one of them is considered to be the standard variety. Similarly, if we talk about standard British English, so uh, uh, in Britain, then there would be multiple varieties of English uh, or a number of varieties of English. And one of them is considered to be uh, standard British English, right? Similarly for other uh, Englishes, like there are uh, multiple varieties in that country, but one of them is considered to be uh, the standard one. So that standard English wouldn't be uh, language of a particular group, rather uh, you can say uh, the people of the whole re uh, region are the people, uh, all of the people who are speaking that particular language, they would consider that language to be the standard one or uh, as the idealized form. And uh, as I said earlier that this would be the language of mass media, this would be the language of uh, teaching material or it would be the uh, if it is official language, then it would be considered to be official language or national language. Now, um, the next topic that is accent and dialect. Now, if we talk about uh, accent, aspects of pronunciation of language that identify where the speaker is from regionally or socially is called accent, right? Now, aspects of pronunciation of language are actually called accent, right? Now, aspects of pronunciation of a language are called uh, the accent. Now, uh, whenever we are speaking uh, any language, say English, right? Now in English, we can have some uh, influence or aspect, uh, uh, influence of some of the aspects of local languages. So then in English, we are going to have a native accent, like 
the accent of local languages now similarly when we are speaking urdu like in urdu it uh, becomes very clear to us like whenever someone is speaking we can simply identify that where the person is from now how do we get to know that where the person is from it is actually from the accent of his language right now that accent is the uh, aspects of pronunciation of that language now that aspect uh, those aspects of pronunciation uh, in urdu would be actually taken from their own language or their variety of language which they are speaking now it is a myth that uh, some speakers have accents while others do not we might feel that some speakers have very distinct or easily recognized types of, types of accent while others may have more subtle or le less noticeable accents but every language user speaks with an accent right so uh, we cannot say that some of us have an accent and others they don't have an accent everyone will be having an accent but for some it would be noticeable and for some others it wouldn't be noticeable at all right so uh, if if someone says that some speakers they don't have accent it it would be a myth it is not uh, a reality now uh, uh, apart from accent we have a dialect as well now the features of grammar and vocabulary as well as aspects of pronunciation like if we take features of grammar and vocabulary and we also consider pronunciation right uh, that are uh, different among speakers of a social group make a variety of a language which is called a dialect right now here we were uh, in ex uh, accent we were only dealing with the aspects of pronunciation but when we come towards dialect now in dialect we are dealing with uh, grammar vocabulary and aspects of pronunciation like if we consider all of these uh, features like features of grammar features of vocabulary and features of pronunciation so taking them together uh, uh, would be showing differences in different varieties of the same language now that then like those differences would be terming a variety as a dialect right like uh, if we have uh, a language that would never be homogeneous rather that is heterogeneous across the region or across the social classes now uh, would see that people speaking a language in one area uh, are using different vocabulary items and they are also using some of the different grammatical features they are also having some different pronunciation as compared to the, uh, the same language spoken by uh, people of another region right now if you want to just look at uh, this from the perspective of cities say we can take uh, some cities in pakistan like starting from karachi then lahore islamabad peshawar uh, quetta right now uh, what would happen like if we look at urdu spoken by uh, native speakers or native people of these cities now they would be having uh, different uh, grammatical features in their language they would be using different uh, vocabulary items or choices for for vocabulary or they they can use a uh, different pronunciation for a word right now if the, there is difference in uh, these cities now we say these cities are speaking different dialects of urdu right now though like it has not been established that these uh, cities would uh, have some uh, dialects or they they are speaking different uh, varieties of urdu but still like uh, just for an example i have given uh, i have uh, mentioned this that if people from these very areas they are speaking uh, a variety that is having uh, distinct grammatical uh, features uh, distinct choice of vocabulary and uh, difference of pronunciation from the, uh, the speakers of other areas then we say that this area is having a different dialect right now if you just focus on your uh, regional languages you would get to know that people from different regions would be having uh, different dialects spoken there right say if it is uh, pashto now the people from maybe uh, south or south of the province would be having uh, one variety of the language spoken people who are bordering with afghanistan they would be having another variety spoken uh, speaking 
uh, uh, and uh, if like uh, they are close to uh, Punjab border, then they would be having some other, uh, you can say, variety spoken. And uh, those who are living in Balochistan, they would be having another variety of Pashto. So all of these varieties of Pashto um, are actually uh, the same language. Like we can't say that uh, their language is different because people are uh, able to, like people from different regions, they are able to uh, understand uh, uh, like the variety that is spoken in different region so uh, this is the same language but different varieties of of that language or we can say different dialects of of, of the same language so we can say uh, that uh, we can say a language that has different varieties and those varieties are because of grammatical feature differences of grammatical features uh, difference of word choice and difference of pronunciation now, uh, then we move on towards dialectology. Now, it is the study of dialects to distinguish uh, between two different dialects of the same language and two different languages. Now, uh, we can have, uh, I can say, as I said, that we can have uh, different dialects of one language. At the same time, we can have two different languages, right? Now, two different dialects are because of some of the differences now those differences are in grammar in word choice or in pronunciation right so these are differences but still people they are able to understand each other like uh, you can take an example like those who are living in banu or di khan and those who are living in peshawar now they would be speaking different varieties of pashto but that doesn't mean they are not able to understand each other so when they are uh, able to understand each other it means they are speaking different dialects of the same language. But if we just take an example of uh, Hindko and Pashto, now the people wouldn't be able to understand each other. So there it, it is actually uh, the difference of language. It is not a difference of dialect anymore. Rather, they are able to understand. They, they are not able to understand each other. This means they are using different languages. Now this is how like we can differentiate between dialect and uh, language like if we are talking about uh, different dialects now people who are speaking different dialects they would be able to uh, understand each other whereas if we are talking about two different languages now the speakers of both of those languages wouldn't be able to understand each other right so uh, uh, you must have a clear distinction between uh, dialects and languages like uh, people speaking uh, two different dialects of the same language would be able to understand each other whereas people speaking uh, two different languages they wouldn't be able to understand each other okay the next is uh, linguistically no dialects are better than the others uh, they are only different now uh, you might have a question that if uh, a language has different dialects or if it has different varieties so which of the varieties are better? Now, linguistically speaking, no variety is better. Every dialect or every variety of that language that is similar or equal linguistically, because uh, it is doing what other varieties of uh, our dialects of the language can do, right? But because of some uh, uh, political or social reasons, one of the dialect that is considered to be um, prestigious, right? We cannot say superior, because no dialect is superior or inferior, but some of the dialects, those are socially prestigious. Now that so social prestige to a language is because of political or cultural re reasons, right? Now if an area that is having uh, uh, rich culture or that is having political power, so that dialect would automatically become, uh, you can say, uh, prestigious dialect. Right now, how can that be? For example, if uh, uh, there are many, you can say, poets, novelists, and dramatists who are uh, concentrated in one particular area, and all of them they are writing in their own dialect. Now, with the passage of time, a dialect that would become the standard dialect or the prestigious dialect. Similarly, if uh, we have uh, an area which which is historically rich, like uh, 
uh, historically that that area has been a seat of government like um, maybe that is capital or people from that area they actually rule the whole region so that uh, area would be uh, like that dialect would be then politically prestigious dialect or because of political reasons that dialect would become a uh, prestigious dialect right so uh, within language that dialect would be then standard dialect like all the uh, mass communication that takes place all the uh, official uh, tasks those are carried out those would be in that particular dialect right okay then uh, this dialect uh, like we uh, we can have uh, dialects of two types now one is regional dialect and other is social dialect now if we talk about regional dialect now a lot of uh, research, researches have been uh, conducted on uh, differences uh, in different regions where the language is spoken right and uh, now how the research is carried out like uh, for such sort of studies norms were selected uh, who are uh, non mobile older rural male speakers right now like if you want to uh, find out a dialect of language so what what is to be done first of all you will have to find out some people on which this uh, research would be conducted and who would be those people they would be called uh, they are called norms right and norms must have some of the qualities like they are non mobile non mobile mean they never leave their villages rather they stay there they are older people right they are rural they are they are male speakers and similarly you can add another thing uh, that they are uh, either uh, illiterate or less educated right now these things would be actually making them subject of the study now their language then would be analyzed to find out whether they are using a particular uh, uh, dialect or not or uh, what are the features of that dialect right so the pronunciation which these norms use now that pronunciation would become um, the standard pronunciation of that dialect the vocabulary choice which these norms are using that would be actually uh, uh, the vocab uh, vocabulary of uh, vocabulary choice of that particular dialect similarly if uh, we look at the grammatical features now the grammatical is features used by these norms would be actually uh, the, uh, the grammar of that dialect now they they were considered uh, less likely to have any influences from outside the region in their speech now as they are non mobile as they are rural as they are either less educated or illiterate so the influence from other languages that would be less now to get to know uh, like how uh, if you move uh, uh, across the cities or if you uh, get education in some other languages so how that uh, that can influence your language now that can be simply uh, understood like you just uh, look at uh, some of the uh, some of your family members who are living in rural areas and they are uh, either less educated or illiterate now if you just look at their language their mother tongue and you look at your own language while you are studying here in islamabad you are interacting with people who are from different very backgrounds different very they are speaking different very languages and islamabad being capital city is having uh, you can say dominance of urdu as no national language being cosmopolitan city it has you can say uh, english uh, being used as well so your language would have a lot of influence similarly you are in touch with uh, mass media and social media so again urdu and english would be having a lot of influence on your language and you can simply compare your own language with language of your maybe grandparents or maybe uh, some of your relatives who are living in rural areas and they are uh, less educated or illiterate now their language that would be pure whereas your language that would be having influence of other languages as well that is why to find out uh, features of a dialect the researchers would be looking for norms right so that their language has the least influence of other languages now one consequence of using such criteria is that uh, the resulting dialect description tend, uh, tends to be more accurate of a period well before the time of investigation right now the uh, problem uh, uh, with selecting these norms is that the language which we are exploring or the dialect which we are 
uh, you can say describing that is not of recent time or for future rather that description uh, description is of a language that was there even before we are conducting the research right so with the, as with the passage of time like the dialect would uh, keep on having some uh, uh, influence from other dialects of the same language or from other languages so that research that is not you can say uh, for the for, for future rather it is there for, uh, for the time when the research was being conducted nevertheless the detailed information obtained as provided the basis of a number of linguistic um, atlases uh, of whole countries and regions right now such sort of research that would be giving some information which uh, which uh, helps us to form a certain uh, maps linguistic maps of of countries or regions like we can identify that in which area which language is spoken and uh, within a language which area is having which dialect right so as i have just given you example so we can say like uh, uh, if you keep on moving in, in a region we say uh, in the beginning like there is uh, region a and then there is uh, region b and region c and region d similarly all of those regions would be having their own dialects like dialect a dialect b dialect c so a language has multiple varieties and all of those varieties are termed as dialects and those dialects would be different from each other but how how can we get to know we can get to know only after conducting research and for for that we needs uh, we need norms right okay now then is uh, isoglosses and dialectical boundaries as a map you have uh, multiple lines similarly if we uh, want to draw uh, linguistic maps we'll have to have some um, um, you can say lines some imaginary lines or some uh, different types of li lines are there on, on map as is uh, for geographical uh, uh, regions we, we draw certain lines similarly for linguistic mapping we also draw some of the lines uh, in uh, next on uh, next slide you will find out that uh, how linguistic mapping is done but uh, first you must know that isogloss is a line on, on linguistic map and it represents a boundary between the areas with regard to one particular linguistic item now isogloss like wherever you are drawing that isogloss or wherever you are drawing that line on a map it means that uh, uh, you can say on one side of that line people are using one linguistic item and on other side of the map people are using another linguistic item uh, now uh, one of the example which which has been given here later on we'll be discussing that that when those uh, norms were asked that uh, uh, what they call to a particular container they said we call it a bucket right and like uh, uh, all of them they 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 were asked the same question and they kept on saying that we call it bucket right and there came a a place like after that people they they started saying that we call it a bale right now uh, where people they started using a different choice of bale instead of bucket there the line was drawn similarly like people were shown a bag of of paper and they were asked that what do you call to this particular object they said we call it a sack sack right now uh, researchers they kept on asking different people and they they kept on saying that it is a sack 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 now there came a point or a place where people they said no we don't call it a sack we call it a paper bag right now there they they draw uh, uh, they draw a line and say that this is a region for uh, you can that that is separating you can say uh, uh, two different uh, varieties uh, having different linguistic choices now it is the boundary between areas with regard to one particular linguistic item uh, people they are using a uh, different word but that doesn't mean they are using a total different variety of language now it is only choice of word that is different right now when a number of isoglosses come together uh, to form a thick line they become a dialect boundary right now they keep on asking for different uh, you can say linguistic choices like 
as it was for bucket and it can be for paper bag it can be uh, maybe for bread it can be for milk it can be for so many uh, words right linguistic choices similarly for different grammatical um, aspects like they would be asked uh, some, some of the questions and uh, they, they would keep on drawing ISO glasses now there would come a point that all of those ISO glasses they would make a very thick line now that thick line means that uh, people uh, living on one side of that line they they have one dialect and people living on on the other side of the line they would be having another dialect because the differences have uh, have been so you can say noticeable that we can't say that all of those people on both sides of the line are speaking one dialect rather because of the differences we say that they are using different dialects now just to look at isogloss you should look at this map this is there in uh, your use book as well so you can just go go to book and uh, consider it now this broken line that is actually this one this one is uh, isogloss right now what is happening like people when they were asked about a particular object and they said that this is a paper bag so for them this small circle has been put like all of them like what is this paper bag paper bag paper bag paper bag like they they kept on saying paper bag paper bag now here like when the uh, researchers reached here you know, no more uh, uh, of them they were saying that paper bag rather they started saying is uh, paper sack paper sack paper sack right so you can see they they uh, started putting this plus sign right so uh, they uh, you can say uh, placed a broken line here this one which is called isogloss because people on one side of this line they say paper bag and people on other side of this line they say paper sack now similarly they would be asking for other items like say they would be asking for bread so what they would say for bread over here a circle would be put and wherever they people they would start changing the word like they would then start putting another word but they would uh, the researchers they keep on doing this and they keep on putting these isoglasses together and these isoglasses then would uh, turn into a continuous line not this broken line rather a continuous line so when this turns into a continuous line we say that uh, people on uh, living in this region like on uh, people living on, uh, uh, in the region on this side of the line they are speaking one dialect and people who are living on this side of the line they are speaking another dialect right now uh, if a very similar distribution is found for another two items such as um, a preference for uh, pale and uh, uh, to the north and bucket to the south then other isogloss probably overlapping the first one can be drawn uh, on the map when uh, a number of isoglasses come together in this way a more solid line indicating a dialect boundary can be drawn as i said that this is only for paper bag and paper sack similarly they would be asking uh, so many other uh, items and when like uh, there is a difference they would draw the same sort of line there and when all these isoglasses come together they would be then forming a solid line and then th this is uh, the distinction of two different dialects dialect on uh, this side and the dialect on the other side of the line uh, okay using this dialect boundary information researchers found that uh, uh, in the upper midwest of the usa there is uh, a northern dialect area now northern dialect area like uh, say paper bag pale kerosene uh, slippery uh, cat and sick now look at these uh, words which uh, northern dialect people are using and what the midland dialect that, that uses like paper bag that is paper sack for them and this pail would be bucket kerosene would become uh, this uh, coal oil this uh, slippery would become slick get would become uh, get sick would become um, take uh, sick right like get would become take uh, 